Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler and I am so grateful and thankful for each of you taking time to join me today, either live or taking the time to watch this program on the rebroadcast. I'm excited about what we're going to be talking about today because I believe it is a now word. You see, I believe that not only does God give us his word and has he given us his word to at any moment, any time, any place in our life, we can search the scriptures, we can find the truth of God's word dealing with a specific topic or subject, whether it's healing, joy, peace, encouragement, the list is endless. But I also believe that God gives a now word. And I believe that during this message today, at some point, and I want to encourage you, open your heart, be receptive, don't resist, don't enter into this time together with any preconceived notions like God doesn't understand or God can do it for someone else, but God can't do it for me because it hasn't happened yet. Open your heart to the possibility that possibly it just wasn't God's perfect time for him to do what you're asking him to do. You see, when we ask God to do something according to his word, we can be guaranteed that when we believe and pray and not doubt that it's ours. Now, where we get misled is when we don't hold it in our hand, when we don't see it happen immediately in the natural, but in the spirit, it is yours. And my friend, can I just share a deep truth with you today? Everything that we see and everything that we have experienced in the natural has come from the spirit first. And so if we will get more and more in tune with having a spirit consciousness, not a lower natured consciousness, you see a lower natured consciousness has to touch it, has to taste it, has to see it, has to hear it, has to feel it, has to possess it in these two things right here. But as believers, we are called to elevate our thinking. Say that with me, elevate my thinking. In other words, set your affection on things above and not things here below. And if we approach the word of God from just a below mindset, we'll miss it every time. But if we realize that God's word is spirit and it is truth, we will elevate our, th in other words, you have been uprooted from this kingdom and implanted into God's kingdom. Right now, you, have been, you are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. You say, wait a minute now. I'm still living here on earth. I still walk into my, my home address every day. Oh, physically you are here. But God has uprooted you from this kingdom and the control of this kingdom and implanted you into the kingdom of the dear son, Jesus Christ. And so what, what takes place from the point of us receiving Christ throughout the rest of our life. It's tuning up our thinking to who we are in the spirit. So going back to what I said a moment ago, before we get into this today, just because you haven't seen it happen does not mean that you cannot declare that it has already happened. Amen. Come on. If you've laid hold of the promise that by his stripes, you were healed, just because you have an ache and pain, just because the doctor says he still sees the problem there, you can declare with confidence by his stripes, I was healed. And what I have found is the more you say it, the more you believe it, the more you declare it, the more you, you it becomes tangible to you. And so I encourage you, watch the words that come out of your mouth because you will have whatever you say. If you say you're going to be poor the rest of your life, guess what? You're going to be poor the rest of your life. If you say you're going to be weak and struggling all the days of your life, guess what? You're going to have just what you say. Why? Because confession is spirit. 
words, while they may be invisible to people, boy, the impact that they do bring. Hey, before I go any further, I want to give a special shout out to a, to a beloved brother and a friend of Adis and mine. And his name is Pastor Godwin Makanga. I love saying that name. I feel like I'm speaking in tongues every time I say it. Pastor Godwin, we want you to know we love you. We're so grateful for you. And we are excited for the completion of the women's home just a few days from now there in Uganda. I had a beautiful and blessed conversation with him last evening through uh, texting and uh, they're creating the sign and something that they're going to be putting special for everyone to see as they walk into the sitting room there into the ladies uh, home in Uganda. For those of you that don't know, uh, God privileged uh, Adis and myself along with the people of Voice for Jesus Church here in Miami to uh, partner with the ministry there in Uganda. And Pastor Godwin Makanga was the point man. And uh, he has just worked, worked, worked over the last 10 months to bring this home, not only physically, but prayerfully and just believing God with us for the funds. All of the funds came in before Christmas, early in December, and uh, they are running with the vision to complete that home. And we just love you so very much, Pastor Godwin, and we are just privileged and honored to have you in our lives. Let's get right into the word today, amen? Be anxious for no thing. Let's get into this. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, we find these words, Be anxious for nothing or no thing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God. Oh, can we linger there for just a moment? Nothing quite like the peace of God of God. The peace that surpasses all intellectual understanding. You should be losing your mind. You should have lost it long before now. But look, you're still here. Why? Because God has graced you with his peace. Not just some peace, but his peace. He doesn't fight to hold on to it. He doesn't work to maintain it. Oh no. He is peace. <laughs> Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, before I read verse 8, some would hear that and say, you know, it almost sounds too good to be true. You know, if you have not noticed, the word of God is absolute. Be anxious for nothing, for no thing. Now, right now in your life, you can think of at least one thing that you are trying your best to walk out this promise and not be anxious over something. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's your personal health. Maybe it's something in your home, your marriage with your children. Maybe it's entering into the new year of 2021. Do you know statistically around Christmas to the end of the year, out of any time of the year, this time of the year, because of anxiety, because of worry and fear, do you know that suicide is at its highest rate? You, for, for most of us, we stop and we think, most of us that are believers, and we say, well, this is the Christmas season. This is the most joyous time of the year. This is the time that we celebrate the birth of our risen Savior, which because of the relationship we presently have with him, we can lay hold by faith the promises of God's word for any area concerning our life and anyone in our life, and we can have what the word of God says we can have. So for a lot of us, we, we lose touch that there 
are a vast majority of people in the world that have not yet experienced the relationship that you as a believer in the finished work of Christ now presently enjoy. Narrow is the way that leads to God, that leads to heaven, but broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. The Bible says that many on that day will say, Lord, we thought we knew you. And he will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You see, while you and I as believers in the covenant promises of God, the relationship that we've been afforded through faith in the finished work of of the cross, there are a vast number of people in the world, though they may appear to be religious, they do not walk in relationship with God. And I believe that it is, a very, it is very important that you and I as believers, while we celebrate, we enjoy the victory, the life, the joy, the peace, the benefit of being a believer, we should never forget that Jesus himself said that we're called to be salt and light, to be influencers from the position of relationship with God through what Christ has done. To reach back (laughs) and to minister to those that have not yet received the gift of eternal life that you and I have experienced. You see, we're all called to be an evangelist in the sense that we are called to herald and to proclaim the glad tidings that they who do not know Christ can know him. And make it very simple, non-complicated, just calling upon the name of the Lord and trusting in the completed, finished work of the cross. You know, I know I've said that several times, but until we are thoroughly convinced that the cross is enough, we will not be able to effectively minister salvation to someone. You see, oftentimes we make it complicated, but it's very simple. He has made, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. You see, Jesus is not a way. Jesus is, watch this now, the only way. You see, when I talk about the finished, completed work of Christ, it is rooted and grounded in the words of Jesus himself where he said, it is finished. There's no need for any more turtle doves to be brought to the temple to be sacrificed. There's no need for the priest of human means to go in behind the veil and to sprinkle the blood upon the altar. No, I myself shall take my own blood into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle that blood upon the mercy seat once and for all, offering up my blood as an eternal atonement for the forgiveness of all mankind's sins. So, some may say, does that mean that everyone is saved? Well, let me throw a little food for thought. In some regard, All men have been saved, rather all men have the opportunity to receive the payment in full for their sins so that they would be pardoned and engrafted in and become family to God. You see, I don't believe in the fatherhood of God and uh, uh, what do I mean by that? That God, uh, that we are all God's children. No, we are not all God's children. Those who have called upon the name of the Lord Jesus are God's children. But everyone else has gone astray. They've yielded to their own way, their own will, their own plan, their own idea, and and it is rooted in a lower-based nature. 
not in the blood of Jesus, not in the atonement for man's sins. No, they believe, well, you know, I don't cuss as much as I used to, and I go to church once in a while. Sometimes I even drop a little money in the bucket, so that I, I don't lie that often. I, I don't steal uh, that often. I seem to be getting better and better as my life uh, progresses forward. So, so I believe my good works outweigh my bad works. And uh, when I stand before God, he's going to weigh them in the balances and say, you know what? You were, you were better more of the time than you were not. No, that's not the way it works. And it's not my idea or my concept. It is God's. Mm. So we need to reach back. We need to always be open and available. More important than your ability, my friend, it is your availability to reach out from from the place that you have received and always be ready to be a minister of the gospel, the good news, to whomever God makes you sensitive to share that good news with. Now, sometimes if we're not careful, we can read a promise in God's word and say, no, that can't be true. Be anxious for no thing or for nothing. And as I said, right now you can think of something that maybe you dreamt about last night and you woke up in a sweat something that keeps you up at night, something that you find yourself meditating on, marinating your mind on, worrying about. See, we pretty fear up and anxiety up by using words like worry or I'm concerned. (laughs) We're either in faith or we're in fear. We're either in total belief or we're in doubt. And my friend, doubt will cancel out faith. So I want to encourage you today, no matter what it is, know this. God has called us to be anxious for no thing. I don't care if the dog is sick, the cat is struggling, whatever the problem. I mean, the list is endless that that the enemy will use to to, uh, distract us from the promise of, of God's word. And distraction is deception. And deception will lead you away from the life that God has chosen for you. Now let's look at verse 8. How can we be anxious for no thing, for nothing? This is how. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, whatever things, if there's any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Ah, you mean there's something that I have to do? Yes, there is. See, it's not enough to say, I'm not going to be anxious today. No, you have to control your thoughts by meditating on whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are praiseworthy, whatever things have a good report. If there's any virtue, any praise, think on these things. Whether you realize it or not, you control your thoughts. And your thoughts are very powerful. You can think of chocolate chip cookies long enough and you'll find yourself putting your clothes on, heading to the grocery store and bag it, grabbing you a bag of chocolate chip cookies. In the same regard, you can meditate on the word of the Lord long enough, thorough enough, bringing those thoughts into, you know, we. the, the thing about the chocolate chip cookies is Uh, the devil's not going to wrestle you on whether or not you go and get you a bag of chocolate chip cookies. He could care less. So it's easy to meditate on a bag of cookies. (laughs) But when you begin to meditate on the word of the Lord, oh, there's a little tussle. 
There's a little adversity. Why? Because Satan knows that if you meditate on the word long enough, it'll take root in your mind and it'll become second nature to you. Again, learning curve. Won't happen in five seconds, five minutes, five hours, or five days. It takes time. It takes, not, it takes time. Listen, the thought patterns that, that we have up to this point are because some of them we have thought them since we were young children. And while I believe in the power of God, the miraculous power of God, most things are going to take a little bit of time. Maybe anxiety today is one of those areas that you find yourself leaning toward anxiety. Cut yourself some slack, but as you give yourself some time and grace and mercy, do the right thing and start meditating on the right thing, which is the promise of God's word. Quickly, let's look at what anxious means. To be anxious or anxiety or anxiousness means to take thought, to be troubled or weighted down with cares, to look out, be focused on, or promote a thing. You know, if you're not cautious and careful and mindful, you will, number one, whatever you meditate on is what you will eventually speak. And so if you're meditating on an anxious thought, you eventually will speak it. When you speak it, you're creating. Let me read that definition one more time to you. Anxious, the definition of that word or anxiety is to take thought, to be troubled or weighted down with cares, to look out, be focused on, or promote a thing. What are you promoting? Are you promoting your faith or are you promoting your fear? Are you, spe are you speaking the word or are you speaking your anxiety? Because whatever you speak is what is going to take place in your life. No matter what God wants for you, that is what will take place for you. Let me tell you, anxiety is a distraction. And a distraction leads into deception. And deception will lead you away from the intended plan and purpose of God. Let me illustrate this. I want you to picture for a moment a mother. She's received news that her son is coming home from the war. She knows the date, but she doesn't know the time. And she has made plans for a celebratory party. She has food in the kitchen cooking. She's bought all the necessary uh, side dishes. And it's a busy time in her kitchen. But she keeps going to the window and she keeps looking out that window, looking with anticipation to see that car that will carry her son around her street's corner and drop him off in front of the house. And so she's cooking, but she's doing more looking outside than she is cooking. You see, her real passion that day is not the meal, is not what she's wearing, her real passion and what she is gravitating toward is seeing her son come down the street as she looks out the window. Well, as she does this, what do you think are the possibilities of that beautiful casserole she has in the oven and those great sweet potatoes that she's boiling on the stove top? If her passion and her focus is looking out that window, guess what? She's not focusing on what's going on in the kitchen. And you guessed it, something is going to burn. Now, what are you focusing on? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace 
of God. We all want the peace, but are we willing to go through the process in order to fully, thoroughly enjoy the peace? Oh, we want to be free from anxiety, but it's going to require us doing something, not adding to what Jesus did, not adding to the power of the Holy Spirit, but my friend, in our lives, God has deposited victory, wholeness, peace, and a life to be enjoyed without being influenced by fear or anxiety. Anxiety is simply the byproduct of yielding to the spirit of fear. Let me say that again. Anxiety, being anxious for something, is the byproduct of simply yielding to a spirit of fear. Satan uses distraction to cause believers to be robbed from God's best for their life. Let me say that again. Satan uses distraction to cause believers to be robbed from God's best for their life. Peter was distracted and began to sink. It was Jesus' will for him to make it all the way to him. But Peter was distracted by the wind, the water, and the waves. And consequently, he was overcome by them. Whatever you focus on is what's going to flood through your life. If you focus on your fear, you're going to be anxious. But if you focus on the beauty of the faith that God has given us, then that is what you will experience every time. What are you focusing on? What are you focusing on? Be anxious for no thing. Keeping your focused thoughts on things above, who you are in your new nature, and not that old nature, that fleshly nature, that doubting nature, but elevating your thoughts to who you now are is where we will not be anxious for no thing. Hey, before I say goodbye, I want to make some declarations over your life from Faith is the Victory Fellowship. They are declarations that are rooted in the ground and grounded in the word of the Lord. And I believe that they will help you as we leave and cross this threshold from 2020, entering into 2021. I believe that they will set the tone in how we should be thinking as we enter into 2021. Faith is the Victory Fellowship and myself and Adis declare over you and your family that 2021 will be your year of overflow. That you will see, experience, and walk in blessings you have never seen or experienced before. We declare that 2021 will be the year that your expectation meets manifestation of God's kingdom in your life. We declare the anointing of ease to rest, abide, and joyfully lead and guide your life. We declare that you will experience the faithfulness of God as never before. As we say goodbye to 2020, these are our declarations. We declare that 2021 will be the year of God's overflow in your life. I pray that you would receive that. I believe, I, I pray that you would declare that and believe that as a word from the Lord for yourself. Come on, leave these former things behind. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, Behold, I will do a new thing, not only in the earth, but in the life of my people. Hey, I want you to know that I love you. I want you to know that God loves you. And I want to remind you today, as I say goodbye, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at 12 Eastern, that he 
is faithful. God bless you, my friend. Have a blessed rest of your day.